Welcome back to the 2009 All-Star Classic. It's all tied up here on the main stage. We're hoping for this big game seven. And there you see the East Coast. It's their final game. T-squared getting the troops ready versus the West Coast. And guys, remember, West Coast was up 3-1. They haven't been able to shut it out the last two games. It all comes down to this one. And on the West Coast, you got Lunchbox, Roy, Snipe Down, and Walshy. It's CTF, three, three amazing objective players there. And you're gonna see Snipe Down doing some work with that sniper rifle. And they're facing off against the East Coast here, Scott. And you know, you got the straight ripping duo, which I'm happy to see in this game five. And then you have Defy and Strong Side, two great BRs. So I'm liking this matchup we have here, Chris. Yeah, you got Legit and, and T-Squared. Those are the two I'm gonna be keeping my eye on for the East Coast. And Defy, well, we've seen what his four shot can do on this map. He gets heated up and then he starts pushing long haul. So here we go, Triple X trying to remain undefeated in the All-Star Classic. He has never lost. And he's always been on the East Coast, this time he's on West. Here comes the game types, baby. Capture the flag on the pit now. Anakin and I, we had a conversation before this whole thing started. He said, what do you want the game type order to be? And I said, whatever we do, make this one the final game type because it's so exciting to watch the Rockets, the Snipers, the Overshields, the awesomeness. We're opening up with Walshy as he goes for the overshield, and he's gonna be taken down, but Snipe Down's got the sniper. And I don't see anyone with the sniper here for the East Coast. What's going on, D? Oh, you're looking at stats, never mind. Oh, yeah, yeah. I am, I am, hold on, I, my head is in here. Yo, right? get, get those stats for us, I'm so intrigued. Legit has the overshield for the East Coast, Snipe Down has the sniper rifle for the West Coast, no one on the East Coast picking up the sniper yet. He's going for the sniper. Nice, we have Rocket 3 on the and there you hear the West Coast calling out. We have Rocket says Lunchbox picks him up. He's going to be watching Long Haul. And Walshy has the East Coast sniper rifle on their flag. I'm surprised a player like Walshy hasn't picked up the flag yet. Normally, as soon as he gets in your base, no matter what weapon he has, he's going to pull that flag and make you guys disorganized. And it looked like the reason he didn't do that, the only person over there to help him out was Lunchbox. And Lunchbox goes down. And right now, you're seeing as Snipedown has all the goodies. He's got rockets, he's got a sniper, and he's got a Roy to back him up, cleaning up the kills on Defy. And there you hear some coaching from Triple X. Now, now, when you look at the stats here, when you look these, at them. these teams have played plenty of games here. There's numbers. Look at the East Coast. Positive 61 as a team on CTF the pit. Compared to the West Coast, only a positive 13. Walshy and Lunchbox combined, negative 50 as a team. <laughs> hey, you know what? Walshy has proven you don't need kills to win games. This is true. And here we are watching as Walshy's trying to finish off the kill on the five. There's a kill for Walshy. Negative 49. Yep, there's 50 again. Snipe Down's got the flag, keeping it alive in the long haul. We're going to jump on board with the East Coast, though. Legit, he's got the sniper rifle, T squared, and strong side. They pushed through long haul, but they may have overextended. And they both go down. Defy, the only one there to stop the flag, and he beats down Roy before Roy is able to touch it. <laughs> and there is a back-to-back -back beat down. Defy going for all-star plays here in the all-star classic. It's game seven, and he's guys is really the one that is gonna get things started here for the East Coast. We've seen what he can do with Carbon when their team is trailing. And you know, that's that's the kind of plays that Defy is known for if you're if you pay attention to him. He plays very well under pressure. It, it's the type of player he is, and I think it's because he's such a calm player. That's the thing about the fight. He does not get rattled very easily. Except when he's going four. All right, T squared just picked up double snipe ammo. And when Jit is calling out Roy, who's trying to move the flag through long haul, T squared better get an angle on this. And there he hit him once, but Roy is able to stay alive, and the flag will continue moving down long haul. Let's see how T squared in the East Coast plays this. Two passively, and Roy is going to run yep. this one in. I'm not going to say that was a choke, but choke. All right, Roy putting in the first flag, guys. We're going to three here. It's game seven. Who will be the best? Is it the East or is it the West? You like what I did there? Here we go. We got the sniper in the hands of T squared, and Roy just picked up one as well. You should be a rapper, Puckett. Used to be. My ex is playing rock Give me a job. Watching Torbett. Nice <laughs> and T-Squared is on a spree. <laughs> How do you want to know what goes through your mind? <laughs> so many thoughts, so quickly. Roy versus T2, and T2 has no idea that he's in this fight. 
And Roy finally shutting down T squared spree. I think he killed his brother in the process of it too. West Coast coming in, proving the West. Well, proving statistics don't mean everything. Dominating on the one, two. And there Whoa. is Roy heating up with the sniper. I was about to switch. What was I thinking? You weren't. I wasn't. Defy trying to come up here on the training. Roy backing him up. Meanwhile, Lunchbox picking up the double kill, trying to push into the flag. And Roy spots the final player for the East Coast sitting on top of the snipe. That means they're going to be spotted over at Courtyard. And there he cleans up the kill. You see all four members alive for the West Coast. Now snipe down, picking up a few kills there with the help of Strong Side. Does he have a camo? Because he's just sitting on their training and just destroying their entire team. And he's not even getting shot at until just then when he moves the team. Yeah, people are afraid to look at him right now, it appears. He's got lots of backup, and it looks like the East is just too worried. And Roy's on fire. If he keeps this yeah. up, Instinct is going to be looking naughty tomorrow. He's got to look out those strong side trying to come up behind him there with T-squared. They ran all the way through long haul and looped back around. Roy's trying to cut him off. But I mean, Walshy's got the flag with an overshield, so there's a lot of room for Walshy to get all the way to his base pretty much. And Roy is going to get a running riot. You think so? I feel it. 15 kills in a row. His BR is incredible. And this right is my favorite part about the All-Star Classic. You get to see a little preview oh. of what the individual players are going to do during this tournament. Yep. How well they're coming, how, how prepared they are, everything. And we just saw how well his twin brother is playing. Let's see how Lunchbox plays. And the box is going to put it in. It's 2-0. This isn't looking good for the East. And you know, like looking at the lineups, I think it's going to give the advantage to uh, the East Coast here. But I totally think I'm about to win five bucks, Scott. I think so too. And I'm very upset by that. It's okay. Again, kids, do not gamble with your own money. All right, <laughs> Munchbox is going to be taken down. Roy is going to get it out to the flat, and Walshy is going to die as well. No, Walshy's staying alive. Hey, let's, let's make this a game. I'm going to go start rooting for the East Coast here just a little bit. t squared has got a lot of gum in this match. So much stride. He's going to be taken down. Legit staying alive to hit the shot. Did I get that? Oh, kind of. Oh, man. I got to see it. It was sweet. No shield. Jumping from the green box. Connects. And now he's going for wall. Oh. And he does it. These guys are making the highlight reel so easy to put together. <laughs> Adam Contini, thank your lucky stars. And there we see Legit going to work. Defy cleaning up the kill, and now the East Coast is on the offensive. Watchbox getting the first shot, Legit backing away. And he's going to need a lot of help from Defy here, who just came out the runway. And there he comes next with Walsh's shin. This is the Legit they need to have in order to win this tournament. And DMAC is on the phone, fired. Right now, <laughs> Legit is going nuts. DMAC trying to get some important stats, apparently. <laughs> Legit with the sniper rifle, going to work. T-squared has the rocket. Scott, what did I say about, like, I switched to the team and they start winning? I want to see. Right, let's test it tomorrow. Yeah? I think that's accurate. All right. Well, with Legit and T-squared, we're holding hands in the sword. We're jumping on board with Big Daddy T. He's got the rockets. You don't see the Rockets going to sword that often, Chris, mainly because they're completely useless in there unless you're in a stalemate in the Team Slayer and you just want to try to get a kill. Pretty much if you take the Rockets into sword, you're telling your teammates, I'm not going to move, I'm just going to sit here for a while. RS2, Squared's mobile. And now you hear Archie trying to coordinate, calling out all the opponents. East Coast knows it's do or die time. They have seven minutes left. They're trailing by two. West Coast just needs one more flag to be crowned the all-star champions. And T-squared unable to connect with that rocket. That is going to prove costly. We're switching back over to the West Coast as Roy, who was on fire earlier, picks up another sniper. He's playing out of his mind. And Roy is dominant. I expected Snipe Down to come out a lot stronger this game. He is the most dominant player on this map, going positive 59 in his career. I kind of forgot Snipe Down was playing. I did too. You know, you know it's kind of nice to see him giving up the power weapons, though, and playing objectively here. Yeah. It just shows another element of his game. That's why Snipe Down is such a complete player. 
player. And after watching him play back in Columbus, I had to say, hands down, Snipe Down was the best player on the circuit. Not only was he connecting with every sniper shot, he was also connecting with every single uh, battle rifle shot. As you see him doing work there on Legit's overshield, just one shot away from picking up the kill. And now he's, with no shield, able to stay alive long enough to stop strong side wow. with the flag. That was incredible. And, and here's a man who's really evolved his game as it started. We watched him jump on an eighth place team in the beginning, and, and now to where he is now, complete different change. I mean, your first event, you finished eighth. Your next event, you finished first. Not a bad career for this kid. <laughs> And Roy going to work with a double kill, but East Coast was able to score. So they're on the board. It's now two to one. It's first to three, and we have six minutes left, basically, in regulation time. Two guys in the mall. They're one, my guys. Two guys in the mall. That's me. They're both going either side. Watch out there, S1. No, they're both going to fight. Both going to fight. What's their first PR push out? And you see Roy taking a look at his twin brother's screen. Saw legit on Lunchbox's death screen. That's a hill one move right there. And now he's able to clean up some spawn kills. Picking up the double, and he's only got to beat T squared. And T squared is getting mobbed by his teammates. There's the triple. And it didn't get it, but he got, the, he got a medal out of it. And here comes Strong Side stopping the rocket launcher over on his side of the needle. Dropping on board with Walshy. This may be it for the East. No. No. There's no, no one in well. position. The West is Legit. all still back on their side of the map. And Roy just foreshadowed another player over on training. Meanwhile, his twin brother, Lunchbox, doing work against T-squared. There's a nice double from the twins. Their BRs are on fire so far in this All-Star Classic. I haven't seen them miss a shot. And SK told me instinct they're going to be the team to look out for. Not straight ripping this event. That's kind of shocking, you know? After seeing them play in Anaheim, I thought that was ridiculous. But you've, we've seen the talent. We saw how they could play back in Meadowlands. And we've seen streaks of brilliance from them the rest of the season. And here we see the third final flag in the hands of Lunchbox. Defy the only man to beat. And Defy is going huge. We have T-Square going for the overshield backsmack. He just backsmacked the overshield and Walsh. He was grabbing the flag. Huge play out of him. We're jumping on board with strong side. Nice. And strong side out BR's Roy to save the flag here. And they keep the flag alive as Lunchbox, the box. Bringing it in. And he can. Oh. No one in position. I don't even know who to switch to. Here comes Roy off the spawn. It's coming. And the twins do it. National championship. The West Coast takes the All Star Classic. The East Coast put up a good show here. Took them to seven games. Very competitive. Four to three. West Coast in total control of that final game. Takes the series. And for the first time ever, the West Coast will win the All-Star Classic over here on Halo. And check out the stats. The man of the hour right now is Roy. Not so good at assisting because he finishes all the kills he starts. Plus 12 in that game. The only person to go positive was strong side for the East. So congratulations to the West Coast on their victory. We're going to a quick break, but when we come back, we'll have the Old Spice Swagger moment of the match. <laughs> 